Hi everyone, my name is Gregory. Today I would like to share with you one of the techniques I've been using in my office uh, step by step. This lady, she's uh, mid-60. Um, she's, uh, she's wearing her upper partial denture for more than 30 years. Now she's uh, saying that uh, she doesn't like her appearance and she'd like to have something else to be done uh, to improve your cosmetic outcome. So we discussed about uh, just uh, putting uh, upper partial denture uh, in, uh, in a better design, uh, positioning your lower teeth with the braces, uh, placing the implants uh, with a different restorative uh, uh, prosthesis, and um, due to financial uh, problems and economics, she wants to, she wants to start uh, just with the implants uh, placement in the future um, or over denture on those implants. So you can see she has a class three position of her jaw. She has a two size discrepancy. Even the jaw is very big, but the teeth are very small. Um, she has big overjet, reverse overjet, um, due to um, anatomical position. And um, what she wants to do is to improve her um, teeth appearance and in the position of those teeth. So we uh, start uh, placing the input on the size number uh, on the, uh, size number 12. And uh, you can see from this picture we have back on concavity because the tooth was extracted for, for a long time ago and uh, the bone is shrinked. So, um, I want to show you uh, how I approach this case, uh, how I place the implant in Y. So this is a buckle view and we see that uh, the, the distance between number 11 and number 13 is very big. As I said previously, she has small teeth but uh, it's a big jaw and we have to also keep in mind that uh, when we're going to the restorative stage, how we're going to manage uh, those two discrepancy. Um, and bring the final outcome so the patient will appreciate it. This is um, a closure view in, as I said before, it says she has a buccal concavity and um, that's why I have to keep it also in mind when we're placing the implants, how much bone we have and uh, how we're going to restore it later, lately. This is a 3D picture and you can see on the 3D picture so we have um, almost 13 millimeters in height and we have almost four millimeters in width. So we know that uh, we don't have enough bone and we, when I'm going to place the implant, I know it's uh, ahead of, of the surgery that I need the bone graft. And I'm going to put a bone graft around uh, uh, the buccal area. So, how I done the surgery? The first, uh, I'm using a pilot drill to see that, uh, what the position of my implant would be and um, how it's going to relate it to my um, final prosthesis. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to uh, take initial picture to see if I'm in the right position and then I'll proceed with a further um, in a first surgical procedure. You can see that uh, the pilot drill went, went down to 13 millimeters and I'm trying to use right now it's uh, uh, expansion kit from MIS. Uh, I'm trying to also with expansion is to improve the the weights of the bone and also um, make the improvement uh, of the quality of the bone. The quality of the bone on this side is type 4. Uh, the patient didn't have uh, anything there that's, uh, so the bone is not very strong um, and by condensing the bone and expanding the bone I'm trying to improve the quality of the bone. So when I place the implant, I have uh, a nice, um, nice torque and nice retention of the implant. So this is a final picture of uh, the implant. You can see that it's uh, right almost at the borderline with the sinus. Um, I did two stage surgery um, at this patient. So I put a healing cap after the placing the implant, and you can see this is a picture. And also you can see we don't have any fracture uh, of the buccal plate but what I do in this case I notice I have to place the bone graft because the buccal wall is very thin so I'm going to score the, uh, the buccal wall to get some, some bleeding 
I've been using PRGF lately in my office and this uh, the bone graft been activated and I've been using um, a combination of cancellous and cortical bone in this case uh, we use two membranes uh, for this uh, type of surgery and you can see that uh, I have an envelope uh, incision bone graft bone graft and um, uh, we we'll put a membrane uh, in this case so you can see it's on the next slide and uh, this is a final picture so I hope uh, you will see this presentation helpful and thank you very much